Well, all the formalities aside, today I'd like to show you something that I discovered quite recently and something which has been very useful in my opinion and that is this. If you can't see them already, these are SMD parts by which I mean surface mount device. So yes, you could say that I finally made the transition to SMD parts and that's been very useful in developing capacitor charger version 4 which is right here. So today in this video I'll be showing you how to salvage SMD parts from boards like these and using them for perf board projects because I'm still a big perf board fan. None of that PCB nonsense. Well first off the best thing that you can know about SMD components are that they are absolutely tiny. This is an SMD resistor. Oops, a 1 mega ohm resistor. And here is a through hole equivalent. You can already see the size difference between these two things. And this is the largest SMD resistor I've seen so far and that just about covers a normal through hole 1 fourth watt resistor. And this is a 1 microfarad tantalum SMD capacitor and this is a 1 microfarad electrolytic. I won't go into advantages of each of these types but you can see the size difference. As you already realize you'll be saving a lot of space. A good example of me using SMD is version 4 right here which I haven't soldered yet. So in the previous version, version 2, you can see this 10k resistor which happens to be the pull down for this MOSFET. I could have used the same through hole resistor over here but I didn't because as you can see I have implemented it using SMD and it's absolutely tiny, it takes up no space unlike this resistor which takes up 4 holes or so 2 wasted holes. Also you can see this ceramic capacitor 100 nanofarad for this gate driver. So instead of using it over here I could have just directly soldered on an SMD 100 nanofarad. Well this is actually 1 microfarad directly across the power pins. So you can see how useful SMD is going to be. Well, to start working with SMD components, you'll be needing a few tools. The first here is helping hands. They help you hold boards that you want to solder onto or desolder, whatever. You'll be needing a good set of tweezers. I got these for 500 rupees. Japan, apparently. It's, bit, it's the best bit to get yourself five or six of them with various types. For example, the one with these angled tips or the one I use the most often, regular tweezers, very useful. Oops. And of course a soldering iron. Now it's the tip that many people complain about but I prefer using this standard tip or oh, focus. It's not a conical tip of course it, it's beveled ever so slightly. This gets the job done, you won't be needing more than this for most purposes unless you're working with very small parts. And lastly, this little trinket which helps you identify which size of SMD part you're working with. Very useful. I think every electronics hobbyist should have one of these. And of course, one mustn't forget all these circuit boards that you've salvaged from various electronic appliances. Let's get in a little closer and see what they have to offer. Let's take this old computer motherboard for instance. As you can see, there's an absolute gold mine of parts that you can salvage from this. You won't even need to pay for all these SMD parts and resistors, they practically last forever. So I don't think you need to hesitate about salvaging parts from boards like this. Sometimes you even find something rare that you don't find in hobbyist circles like this large electrolytic surface mount capacitor, all these capacitors which you usually have to pay a few cents for and then of course there are many types of integrated circuits if you work with those but I don't and that's pretty much it all you need to start SMD soldering so let's get down to it alright so set your iron to between 300 and 350 that's up to you depending on your tip size etc tin your tip once 
and I always recommend keeping a piece of sticky tape next to wherever you're working with SMD so that you have a temporary place to put your parts because SMD components are so small they get lost very easily believe me so let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more alright let's hope you can see that so today we'll be salvaging this resistor which says 662 on it which probably means 6.2 kilo ohms so alright let's take it off the board so what you want to do is get yourself some solder and heat both the pads evenly get some solder on there if you like takes a while to heat up because there's a big ground plane underneath this so once you heat up both the sides at once your part simply starts to lift itself off the board and it's at this point where you want to take your pliers and just quickly take it off and put it down on the piece of sticky tape so let's do that again but now we'll be doing it for this resistor so in a similar fashion I try heating up both the pads at once add a little solder so that the part automatically starts to lift off by itself or I don't mean lift off as in rocket science it begins to come off by itself and then you just pluck it out like this and put it down on a sticky tape again so the procedure is quite similar for most parts including this large capacitor it's gonna take a lot more heat to melt the pads the solder on the pads obviously so you begin in the usual fashion like this it's difficult to heat up both pads simultaneously but if you build up enough solder on the joints in and around it soon you will be left with a free part which you can just pick up as usual alright so once you have these parts what next you should first check them using a multimeter to see if they are what they really are I know this is a 100 nanofarad capacitor and the values of these resistors now let's see how to use them on a perf board alright so first what you'll want to do is get yourself some flux which I've gotten on the tip of this ear but and apply it very generously over where you actually want to solder trust me don't be shy with your flux it helps a lot so there's a lot of flux deposited right there melt a little bit of it with your soldering iron and then just tin the pad slightly not too much don't flood it with solder because of the amount of flux we've put on solder usually takes very easily so you know you have two perfect tinned pads like you do on PCBs and then get yourself the part you want which is this resistor and hold it like this over both the pads and then heat one pad heat the other pad I'll actually sort of heat them together simultaneously while you position your part and then once you're done with the placement remove the soldering iron and done you've successfully soldered an SMD resistor of course it varies with the size of the SMD parts how many holes it covers and such but this basic principle applies to most SMD parts including SOIC it works only for specific pinouts though suppose this was a gate driver this is the input this is the output and the power connections the middle two leads have been shorted together on one pad because they couldn't fit on separate pads and then there is this oh, what part is this I'd better check hmm this is a sort 23 yes so sort 23 transistors and stuff voltage regulators fit perfectly on three pads in this fashion leaving the holes free to do through hole stuff and here you can see an assortment of resistors and capacitors that I've played with 
So in this way you can salvage quite a lot of these tiny parts and store them for future use in projects and such. So happy SMD soldering.